what's going on, everybody? Ultimate DJs here from the Teaching Trek uh, YouTube and the Talking Trek podcast and the Twitching Trek Twitchery uh, and all things combined at ultimatedjsplays.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is me, your friendly neighborhood cat person, here with a quick and dirty. This is your introduction to the Mantis Loop, all right? This is everything you need to know upon unlocking the ship, where you need to go, what you're going to be doing with it, how you're going to use it, how you're going to upgrade it, and everything about this loop. Now, we do have another video coming out just a little bit later about a little bit deeper math and a little bit more strategy, but here today, just a quick and dirty on how to use it, where to go, and where you're going to find everything related to this ship and what it is sourcing. So let's hop right on in and take a look at the Mantis. The first thing we're going to do is try to get the Stagon thing unlocked. All right, you can see mine is tier one, just did it. It is brand spanking new. Here it is, this weird, goofy looking ship. All right, there it is. There's the Mantis. And what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to take it out and we are going to come into our galaxy map. You can see right here, there's our uh, exchange area, our augment area. And right down below, we're going to see a brand new cluster of systems. Here they are. OK, and uh, I believe we said there were 17 of them. Now, I will go ahead and tell you right here, smack dab in the middle. Don Shield is a level 33 system. There's absolutely nothing in it. OK, you don't need to get to go to fly here to do any hostels. It's just uh, kind of a staging ground. OK, nothing going on in this system right here. But what you're going to find in each each of these systems all surrounding this hub, starting right here with Azurus. This is the level 33 system. And what you're going to find in here are these brand new hostels. All right. You're going to find some of the Explorer hostels called the Chrysalis, the Axion Chrysalis hostels. And you're also going to find, hopefully we can pop one up on our screen. You're going to find the occasional Apex, the Axion Apex, all right? What are the differences in these two hostels? Well, primarily, what you're going to see is that the Chrysalis hostels dropping a little bit less loot. This is the loot you're going to be picking up. This is Venom. You'll use this in the Mantis Refinery, um, but you're going to see that they drop a little bit less loot as compared to the interceptors that are dropping about five to six times more, maybe seven times more, depending on the case. What you will also find when you come in here and you're trying to kill these hostiles, let me zoom in just here a little bit, you're going to see a few of them with these extra little symbols right over here, okay? These symbols here indicate that this hostel is dropping an automatically activated exocomp. There are three, and despite the tooltip saying five minutes right now, we have confirmed that they actually do only work for three minutes. But there are three different types of exocomps in here. One is gaining one extra shot per round when using your Mantis. Uh, you'll see this one right here, which is a 100% crit chance. Now, it does say plus 100% to crit chance, but as our testing has indicated, this actually pretty much does provide all shots at a critical uh, as a critical shot all right and the third one if we can find it this one right here here you go here's the third version 50% more critical damage, all right? The idea here flying into this system is that you kind of want to have all three of them going at all times. It's going to give you the most damage and the most efficiency. And as we know from the actual ability of the Mantis, it is providing a lot of damage, all right? 70,000% damage boost against these hostiles when using the Mantis. So everything that you can do to get yourself an edge against these hostiles as they do pass a pretty good punch. So what I would do flying into this system, I'm going to kill this one, and then I'm going to kill this one, then I'm going to kill this one, and for three minutes, I'm going to have the absolute most damage boost. So, uh, boost. so that is when I am going to try to come down here and kill this Interceptor Apex that is containing six or seven times the loot. This can be a little bit tricky if you've got a lot of people in here flying around, but you will notice there's all the Explorers, but only one Interceptor, and that is pretty standard. Standard. This is only going to spawn one at a time. This is the jackpot. This is the one that you want to try to get after. All right, so that is what you're going to do. You're going to fly in here and you're going to kill these things. What do you do next once you have that loot, once you're able to fill your cargo? And we will talk to you briefly uh, here in just a moment about the crew that you want to do uh, use with that. But you will also come down in here 
into your Mantis refinery. That is inside your refinery tab, and you're going to see a bunch of new stuff down here. This is what the loop is all about. This is what you're doing. So first of all, these ancient beacons, this is how we actually get into these systems. You'll notice, uh, taking a look here, that these are all token locked, all right? So we are getting two of those a day in a gift chest right here in the Mantis refinery. It doesn't show in your gift tab. It's going to show right here. I've already redeemed mine for today. You'll see it's very similar to Borg Probes in which you can hold eight. Uh, I currently own four, but I've already done my redeem for today. So uh, I can get two of those every single day. I'll use those beacons to get into the systems to kill the hostiles to bring home more of this Axion Venom. The Venom is what we're using throughout most of the rest of this refinery, and I'll show you in just a moment. The Condensed Venom is what we're using to actually power the Mantis Sting. All right, This is the debuff that we are using when we're maybe potentially trying to uh, go into PvP or mess with somebody's armada or something like that. There is a pretty significant damage debuff with this ship, and I'm going to show it to you right here. The best place to see it is right here in the ship build screen. We click on the little Venom sign over here, and it's going to tell us when you disrupt the player, it's going to last for a minute, one minute, but what it's going to do to that player is it's going to reduce their critical chance by 50%. It's going to reduce their critical damage by 50%. Uh, it's also going to reduce the number of shots per round uh, by 40%. That's using the standard uh, deficiency research, if you will, one divided by, uh, or the number of shots, divided by one plus the sum of the bonus. Then in this case, it's 40%. It's also going to delay weapon fire for one round, all right? Uh, and that is basically adding a plus one to the weapon warm-up. We can talk a little bit more about that in detail later. Plus, it freezes your enemy. You cannot warp away. You can impulse and you can summon, but you cannot recall and you cannot warp. The Mantis does all of these things when you sting an enemy, and that sting is powered by this concentrated venom right here, or condensed venom. This is also a daily drop. You don't have to redeem anything. You don't have to uh, pay anything in. This is just going to give you, you get 1,000 a day. One sting costs 500. That is two stings a day that you get. You can hold up to 5,000 uh, condensed venom, which allows you to basically bank up to 10 uses of this mantis sting. Now, once you start bringing home some of this action and Venom. This is what we're using in the rest of the refinery, and we'll talk about these things uh, very briefly. I've already done my refund, uh, my refine for synthetic nitrium. These are the ship parts. This is what is being used to upgrade the tiers of the Mantis. Uh, you can see here all four of these bundles are using this Axion Venom. So nitrium are the ship parts, all right? It has a 24-hour cooldown, and there are two chests. I'll show you the contents if I can. Uh... Blah! There you go. This is what we got at least so far through Tier 7, Tier 8. Uh, and you can see here at Tier 1, which is where I am, single chest at 3, double chest at 15, giving me 150 ship parts. Those parts are then used to tear up the ship. The synthetic ions are the research particles. This is going to give you this research currency. I currently have not bought this one. This one does have a three-day cooldown. If you come back over here and take a look, the research particles have a three-day cooldown, meaning once I redeem this, then I'm on a 72-hour cooldown to get any more of the research particles. Where can I find this research? You can find it inside your research tree, of course, in the brand new Starships tree, which is where all of our specialty research goes. You take a look inside the research, uh, the R&D building, you come over here to Starships, and you're going to see a brand new little section right here for the Mantis. Mantis weaponry, hull plating, cargo, impulse speed, and a few others that are locked for me, and even a prime or two in here. This is the one that I'm going to absolutely recommend that you start with, improving the cargo of the Mantis so that you can bring home more of the loot and be able to do more of the refines. This is very, very important. It is ops locked at various different levels, but has no other research dependencies, which is very, very important, meaning that if you wanted to dump 100% of all of your uh, synthetic ions into this singular research, you can. And that is actually a welcome, positive change, avoiding the prerequisites, allowing you to focus on the research that you want to. You can see that this research is actually going to scale all the way from level 1 at 60%, all the way up to the level 50 
requirement of level 20 uh, to get 500% base cargo boost, which is actually pretty significant on a ship uh, such as this, where the cargo size is very very small uh coming back into the mantis refinery you got a couple of other things that you can actually spend this action venom on and the next item is going to be syndicate xp which is probably what everybody is really kind of uh clamoring about as being the best piece or the best part of the payout of this entire loop the syndicate xp is going to pay out and it's actually not a bad payout certainly as compared to the daily draw i'm currently earning uh 300 syndicate xp per day i do not own the prime so that's it that's all i'm getting is 300 a day well you can see here a single chest is going to get me five times that amount at 1500 and it is on a single day cooldown what some players are going to talk about is the fact that they can't bring home enough cargo to do all of these refines so there is going to be a strategy in choosing what chest you actually redeem when but you will not be able to do it all at least not at today's stage in the game and not at the early tiers of this mantis but syndicate xp certainly being one of the more valuable pieces of return throughout this entire loop and then of course uh the hull fragments hull fragments are basically strange new worlds recruit tokens all right this is a new bundle uh so you get the hull fragments you get a thousand this is on a two-day cooldown so if i drew this right here it'd be 48 hours before i could get it again but these hull fragments right here are going to accumulate and be able to be used in this refinery where i have a chance probably a very small chance but i do have a chance opportunity and a full pull of Strange New Worlds Pike or Strange New Worlds Hammer. I also could pull uh, a full pull of the Rare Officers or maybe 20 shards, 5 shards, or 1 shard. There are only 5 officers in here right now, and that is Pike, Hammer, Ortega, Uhura, and Spock. Uh, notice no Una in here as she is primarily sourced through incursions, but this will be the way to grind out these 5 officers uh, with Scopely giving you a permanent, transparent sort of path i mean this is permanent these will always be here and these recruit tokens are not wildly difficult to come up with yes you can buy them out of here but once you uh, once you unlock the mantis you will also unlock a new set of dailies this daily right here is called action hunter that's the small one and action slayer that's a larger one these do scale by ops, but inside the small one, you'll see I'm earning 1,020 hull fragments. This does scale by ops, so mine's going to be higher than a lot of uh, you watching this video here. But that's enough for one pull, uh, one chance out of that Strange New World's chest. And all it requires me to do is sting two players. Remember, the sting costs 500 of the condensed venom. If I spend 1,000, all right, then I am going to get to finish this daily you will remember that you earn 1000 a day all right so you could do this every single day and earn 1000 whole fragments every single day but there is a larger daily that we would require 2000 condensed venom and that is four stings well you can't do that every single day unless you're going to pay for the juice so you might actually consider doing this every other day because when you do so you will get almost triple in some cases the number of whole fragments out of that second larger daily so if you use your two daily stings every single day all you're going to be able to get is 1000 every single day on the other hand if you sting four people every two days then every two days you're going to get both of these knocked out for me it's going to be 4000 so i could look at 1000 every day or i could look at 4000 every other day i would encourage a little bit of planning and a little bit of strategery here in only accomplishing these dailies once every two days to maximize your return of these recruit tokens therefore giving you more opportunities at earning the strange new world's officers out of this particular officer shard bundle here which is the permanent sourcing for the strange new world's officers this is a in a nutshell the loop that you're going to have as related to the mantis obviously as this thing tears up and as time goes on we are going to see significantly other uh, abilities as far as this ship being able to get in and hit the larger hostiles this ship unlocks at ops 33 
and even myself here at Ops 47 am only hitting the 33s at a Mantis Tier 1. Obviously, as I tier this thing up, it's going to become better and be able to hit larger hostels. But for a lot of you right now, the Mantis is the way to go. For those of you probably at maybe Ops 42 and above, I might suggest that it could possibly be slightly better for you to consider using a traditional ship, at least with today's perspective in the game, with today's opportunity at cargo and so forth. But I will tell you, for those of you Ops 40 and down, the Mantis is the most efficient way to get in here. You can get more cargo with some other ships, but it's going to be significantly more expensive. And none of these exocomps will actually function on any ship other than than the Mantis. So the Mantis is going to be the one that's actually going to get the benefit of these Exos that are automatically popping. Just to give you a little bit of point of clarification on these Exos, again, they are only three minutes. They will uh, stack as long as there are three different Exos. So I've got the percentage chance on this one. I've got the percentage uh, bonus on this one. And then uh, we saw the extra shot right down here on this one. Those will all three concurrently work. However, if I've already got one minute remaining on the bonus damage and I hit another one, my three minute timer will start over. It is replaced and they will not stack their timers. There is currently no place to see, even if I come into the Exocomp building, there is no place to see a timer for these Exocomps, and it does not currently show in the ship management screen when I do have an Exocomp. So you'll be relying and watching your battle logs for the kind of the timing of when these Exos might potentially end up falling off. Let's talk about crew very quickly as we wrap up the video. If you're flying a Mantis, <clears throat> and this is going to be very, very different for a lot of people, results are definitely going to vary, but this is the one that I would certainly encourage you trying out first, especially if you've got a decently tiered 5 of 11, maybe a tier 2, tier 3, tier 3 would probably be better. But what we have discovered through extensive testing with regards to the Mantis is that obviously cargo space is the biggest challenge with this ship. You can see even with all the max cargo officers that I'm running, I still only have a cargo capacity of 8,850. It's not a whole lot, especially when I'm looking at potential refines that are going to cost several thousand per day. So what I want to be able to do is be the most efficient as I can. I want to fill the cargo as I'm only getting two cells to get in these systems every single day. Through extensive testing live on our Twitch panel and from other players providing their insight, this is what's working for me. There are some adjustments that can be made for other players, especially if your 5 of 11 is not getting you enough. But the loot bonus is absolutely crucial here. And then, of course, my 4 of 11, giving me a little bit of synergy there, and my Ston giving me more cargo, and La'an giving me bonus cargo from the lower deck. But you can see I'm nowhere near my statistical bonuses. So this is going to improve over time as I tier and level the ship and get some extra lower deck abilities. That's going to help get me some better stats up here. But cargo is what it's all about. If you were flying a ship that is not the Mantis, what we were determining yesterday, what we found is even still running a 5 of 11 seemed to be really, really good. And then a Marcus, which is crazy. Uh, we'll tell you more about that in detail later. But 5 of 11, Marcus and Khan seems to be working very, very good if you're not flying a Mantis, if you're flying a traditional ship. More to come on this ship and its loop and some detailed mathematics on the refinery coming up a little bit later, but already. 19 minutes on a quick and dirty. It was supposed to be 10 minutes or less. Snake Eyes would be very, very disappointed in me. My name is Ultimate DJs. Please leave your questions down below. This is an interesting mechanic. I know I said that I wasn't super interested in this loop, but these hostels do provide a little bit of thought required as I am proceeding through this grind. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later. And in an upcoming video, we're going to give you some sneak peeks into the efficiency of the refinery itself and what you should be focusing on early as we're trying to get this thing tiered up. My name is Ultimate DJs. Please leave your questions, comments down in the section below. Subscribe. Click on the uh, like button if you like any of the content in here. Follow us by clicking on the bell. Maybe even click that join button to subscribe to our members channel here on YouTube. But uh, no matter what you do, share with your team. And really, uh, we do appreciate you so very much. I am your friendly neighborhood camp person saying meow for now. Love you, mean it, right here uh, from Twitching Trek. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>